It's not how much time you have. It's how you use it. What up guys, Maxi here and I'm bringing you another Echo YouTube video. And today's video is how to win lane as Echo number 2. You guys really enjoyed the first one where I played against the challenger TF and beat him in, and beat him in lane. And this is the second one. This is me versus an auto-filled Annie in Diamond 1 ELO. So you may be asking yourself, why do I care about an auto-filled mid laner who's playing Annie in Diamond 1? Well, it's very important to understand how an auto-filled mid laner, no matter what champion they're playing, how they play the, the, the lane, right? They're going to make a lot of mistakes. They're going to make a lot of errors. They're not going to know what to do. And what does that mean for you as an Echo player, as a mid lane player? That means you have to win the lane. And not just win the lane, you have to stomp the lane. So you may be asking, who, why, why do we have to stop the lane? Because you have to solo carry this game. If you're versing someone who's inexperienced in mid lane, whereas you're a mid lane echo, like one trick or echo main or mid lane main, there's no reason for you to lose this lane. You you outsmart enemy auto filled mid laner, you out skill them, you out play them, you out roam them, you out everything them, alright? So if you do that, you'll be able to win the game. This should be a free game for you. Hopefully your team doesn't go 0 and 10. If your team doesn't go 0 and 10, this should be a free game for you to carry, right? So yeah, reversing an Annie. This is also reversing an Annie. Some of you guys, you know, it's a Diamond One Annie. So even if she is auto filled, probably still plays better than a lot of, uh, you know, gold or platinum Annies, you know. But we'll, we'll see what happens. So the first thing I want to do, the first thing I want to do is push the wave and not take any poke. This Annie is not playing that, you know, aggressively. Right? See, look at her pathing. She walked up to, to five minions, now she's taking aggro. That's a mistake of an inexperienced mid laner. I was able to push the wave into her, and then I'm going to go try to get some uh, vision. Here I'm going for Skarner's uh, little portal thingy, majiggy. Get my Skarner some jungle pressure. I'm walking back to lane. This is where I make a mistake. I walked in here, Annie's level 2, so she gets a free poke on me, but guess what happens? She walks up. Pokes me again, but guess what? My minions and my Q get the return damage, and now we're, you know, pretty much back to even. That was a mistake on my part. Maybe I shouldn't have walked that far into my jungle. I should have probably got level 2 first, but in the end, it didn't really hurt me that much, right? We're still up to 3 CS, and we're, you know, we're even in HP around. So what I want to do is, I don't want Annie to poke me, right? Annie could just step up to me, poke me. But how do I prevent that? I push her in. If I push Annie into her tower, and I have more minions on my side, then she can't really poke me. There, I was scared of the CC, so I backed up, I lost the cannon. But for the most part, I want to push her in, so she can step up and poke me if I have a lot of minions on my side. The more minions I have on my side, because all of Annie's abilities are basically point and click. Ooh, nice trade by me. See, you out damage Annie, pretty much, if you hit your full combo. So because... Annie's abilities, her Q's, her main poke ability, and her auto attacks are point and click. If she point and clicks on you, your minions will aggro to her. So if you have more minions on your side, and she does that, she'll take, you know, a good amount of return damage. She likes, as we see here, she has, she's having mana problems. We're pushing her into the tower. That's just signs of inexperience, because usually Annie's don't have mana problems, because they just farm with their Q. Well, again, she doesn't expect this at all. Boom! Ba -da -pa 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 Boom! Kill the Annie, like that. There you go, we just... Beginning to win the lane. Well, we basically won the lane off that, but we gotta maintain it. So why did that work? Annie does not understand what I could do, right? She doesn't really play mid lane, doesn't really play Annie, but then again, she doesn't know that, oh wait, Echo could die me under tower at level 4? She didn't have that bush warded, and then I just flash onto her, ignite her, stun her. She doesn't have a good reaction time because she's focusing on farming. When you're inexperienced with a champion, you focus more on like farming and using your abilities correctly rather than Looking around the map, seeing where everyone is. That's why it's not it's not good to play a champion first time in ranked. Because think about it, you're focusing on okay, how do I click this ability? What does this ability do? Let me chain this ability. Oh, I gotta make sure I farm. Next thing, but next thing you know, you're not paying attention to what the enemy mid laner is doing. You're not paying attention to like the jungle around you. So that's why in experience you gotta take advantage of that. So now we're walking back to lane. We have oh, we have boots, we have amp tone, we have dark seal. We're very strong now, right? We're very strong. And we're strong enough to like push this wave hard and then start roaming when we get a good opportunity. And we have we're strong enough to like you know probably damage Annie. Annie can still poke me really well, so I gotta watch out for that because Annie's Annie. She'll just CC you, do your damage, and run away. So like I said, push her into the tower so she can't roam. Push her into the tower so she cannot abuse and auto attack me. And what do I do? Just walk around, warding, helping my jungler just in case. 
That's what you have to do. If you push the wave into their tower, don't just stand there and do nothing. Even walk to the river. Just in case your juggle needs to hear your help, just walk there. Ward, clear a ward. Doing little things will help. Uh, little little things like that will help you win the game. So look at this. There's a fight going on in the bot lane right now. I pushed Annie into her tower. What do I do? I roam. She can't come help because she has to clear those minions. I had the step advantage. Thankfully, my team got two kills. I see Janna maybe running to me. Uh, I see Janna running away. It's fine. Skarner will handle it or not. Whatever. Whatever. If I kept chasing, I would not get anything from that. So I'm just going to stop, go back to lane, because the lane's going to push to me now. Make sure I get that minion. That's why I, I eat there to get the minion, not because I'm using E for no reason. A lot of you guys have this meme from my coaching video where I spam protobelt and E on my minions. I was doing it <laughs> to secure the minion, okay? But anyway. So yeah, so now we're one, we have one kill, 40 CS. She has 34 CS, so... Like I said, trade with her. Boom. I out damage her on level 6. Trade with her. Also, you trade with Annie when she has her uh, stun on cooldown. What I mean by that is when her stun is like on 0 stacks or 2 stacks and she just uses an ability, she won't be able to proc her stun in time. So that's when you fight her. Even if she stuns you, if you get off your combo, you'll do a lot of damage. But look at this. Annie is so scared of me, I'm denying her this entire wave, right? I threw my W. She walked all the way back because she was really scared. She missed that entire wave under her tower. That's 6 CS she just missed. And look at this now. Now I'm up 13 CS in one, you know, in like 10, 20 seconds, I'm up 13 CS or whatever. So yeah, that's just just like that. You win the lane. I pushed the lane in. There's something else for me to do. Bot lane's kind of pushed up. Top lane is flat at Maokai. Can't really gank that. My jungler is getting his red. Just gonna, good time to back and get revolver. Now, now we have damage, right? We have revolver. We have a pink ward, we have a health- we still don't even use our health potions, right? Sure, she, she's so scared of me that she's not even poking me. And that's because I'm pushing her into tower, and I'm roaming, so I'm never- I'm never, like, in a situation for her to, like, damage me, right? So I'm gonna walk back to lane now. I'm gonna try to push her in again, maybe try to kill her. If not, roam bot. Because right now, Annie's so scared, she's gonna be playing on her tower. Diving Annie is still annoying because she does have her CC, so I, I don't want to, like, you know, risk- you don't want to take risks if you're ahead. If you're ahead, don't take any risks, because risk means you could potentially mess up. Take the guarantees, because you're already ahead. So look at this. Look at this big wave at her tower. What do I do now? I'm not going to stay here and do nothing. I'm going to go ward the enemy jungler, get my Poro in here, and then try to gank bot lane, right? I'm going to try to gank bot lane. Why? Because Annie's mid. Their jungler's not here. Free gank bot lane. We could dive this. I have my R just in case. Oh, I see Janna. Bye bye, Jana. Throw my W. She used Ignite on me. Panic Ignite. Clear this pink ward for my uh, bot lane. And look at that. Now we're 2 0. We still have more CS than Annie. And we're walking back to lane with another, with another kill. Perfect, right? Now look what happens here. I see my jungler pings to get Annie. So what do I do? I'm like, okay, let's kill this Annie. She has a big wave. Look, look how she, she thinks she could kill me here because she has her ult. Nope. You got jabated. She flashes. Skarner. You stun her. Skarner pulled her out of my queue, but that's fine. I still hit her on the return queue, and boom, we kill her. Right there, Car Skarner should have stood still, but it he moved, so I missed my queue, but there we go. Look, we kill Annie. Annie thought because she had five minions and she had her ultimate up that she would probably burst me down, but I still have my ult, so that was a bad decision on her part, and an experience on her part, but guess what we did that now? We kill Annie in the mid lane. I see Kane going mid, so who's going to stop me from ganking bot? Nobody's going to stop me from ganking bot right now. So I'm going to go gank bot. Because uh, Kane is mid. Kane's probably coming now, but I'll be able to get some kills here. Nice stun. We got our heal. I see Kane coming now, so I got to do this quickly. Got to do this quickly. I tank his ult. E, flash, Q. Uh, my, John, my brand got the kill. Not bad. And I run away. Uh, we got two for one so far. It's not so bad. Not so bad. I got the kills. I got one of the kills, so that's fine for me. So yeah, look at that. Because we killed Annie, have a CS lead on her, have a level lead on her, Kane has to watch her mid lane. I just go bot lane, get my bot lane a kill, get myself a kill. And basically win my bot lane lane also. Sucks that Soraka died, but it's okay. So now, look, we have Proto Belt. Annie doesn't even have an item yet. I'm gonna walk back to lane. What's my game plan now? My game plan is not to do anything stupid. <laughs> and my game plan is to kill Annie again. And just make sure she never comes back alive. And once I kill her, help my jungler roam, you know, 
just, you know, do, do the correct things to help my team win the game. Because just because I'm 4 0, think about it. Think about it. If I die right now to anybody, they get like 700 gold. That's like two and a half kills or whatever. So I do not want to make a stupid mistake. Like I said, do not take stupid risks when you're ahead because you don't have to because you're already winning the game, right? Take risks when you're behind because it could, you know, reward, be rewarding. So Annie, look, Annie, like, walks into my return queue, stuns me, but I have Proto Belt, get into range, boom, bomb. Look how much damage I do to her. I make, I, I'm over aggressive right here. I have this giant wave, I'm under her tower, she ults me, right? This is very, she ignites me too. This is a very bad decision on my part because I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit cocky. I have four kills, I could kill her. But I made that mistake of stepping up too far, so she just ulted me. I'm alive though, so that's fine. But for next time, I should not do that, because that was potentially dangerous. If, like, if I jumped on her right there, I would have died to tower 100%. But yeah, Annie, now Annie thinks she has the power of this lane. Little does she know, she's going to die again, right? Well, what is she going to do to me, right? What is she going to do? Nothing. I know this. I know that she can't kill me. She has no ult. I have my ult, so there's no way she could kill me. No way. What does that mean for me? I'm gonna try to die for now, right? I have my shield right here. I know I could kill her. Boom. And there you go. We come out of an of a D1 lane. 5 and 0. 5 0 and 1. 89 CS. Annie's down like 20 CS. One bot lane. Help bot lane win lane a little bit. And help my jungler, you know, get vision in jungle. And boom. We win the lane and we get this tower. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned about how to play versus someone who is inexperienced. Also play against Annie. Make sure you guys win those lanes versus autofilled players. And I'll see you guys in the next one.